Oh, it's you again. Well, welcome back to What the Math. Today we'll be talking about rates, which is another term for th when things change over other things. What? If you forgot, rate is a relation of one variable to another variable. So in physics and in math, we like to express variables in graphs. You can actually see there's a really, really tiny graph X and Y here. And the uh, yellow line is, is an expression of rate. So it's uh, Y divided by X and it gives you a slope of a line, which is also known as a rate. So some of the examples of rates that you will see on a test are rates of pay. So basically that this refers to uh, how much money you get per hour. So this is money per hour. Also things like gas consumption, or as it's known in IB books, petrol consumption. And this refers to basically how much fuel you consume per hour or per distance or per something. So let's just say it's fuel per distance. You may also hear things like annual rainfall, and that's how much rain do you get per, uh, let's just say per month. Or even things like population density. This would also be a rate of change or a rate. So population density refers to refers to people per, I would just say area, uh, people per area, per square kilometer. So all of these are rates. Now rates can be expressed in different ways. The important thing for you is being able to figure out how to calculate them and seeing that it's a rate and not just a one unit. So just as an example, I'm going to use something a little bit different this time. I'm going to actually show you how to calculate a rate using your GDC, but for, uh, from a game called Minecraft, which you, some of you are probably familiar with. So we're going to try to find a rate of change uh, of two units. And I'm going to explore one, uh, one thing here. I'm actually going to explore, I'm going to explore the relationship between TNT and blocks, or basically how many blocks uh, are being destroyed by each TNT block. In other words, I'm going to place one TNT and then explode it. Then I'm going to place two TNTs and then explode them and count how many blocks have disappeared. And so on and so forth until I find something that looks like a linear progression with the X axis being TNT and the Y axis being blocks. Now, my theory is that it's going to be something linear and, and growing like this. And uh, to try to figure this out, I'm going to do this maybe two, three times, and then I'll show you how to use your data using your GDC and how to figure out what the actual function for this graph is. Because if you remember from your algebra class, your function here should be y equals mx or ax plus b, where b is your y-intercept, and m, m right here, this is your slope. This is right here, this right here is your rate of change. I'm going to make this a little bit brighter. This is rate. So this value right here. So let's try this and see how it works. All right, so I'm here I am in Minecraft. This is creative mode. I'm, I think I'm in the desert. I mean, I know I'm in the desert. And so I'm going to open up my inventory and start exploring blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a very flat area like right here somewhere and place one TNT right here. And then I'm going to walk a little bit this way and place two TNTs right here. And now I'm going to explode them and see how many blocks they take away. All right, so here goes nothing. I'm going to place a lever right here and I'm going to activate it or not. Oh no, here it goes, here it goes. Okay, so now I'm going to take some time here and count all of the blocks that have been destroyed. And 125. So as you can see, I filled this hole with 125 yellow blocks just so I can see uh, or I can remember how many I have. So 125. Now let's try the same thing with two blocks. Let me just remove these cacti from here so they don't interfere with my results. And we're going to do the same for, uh, for two blocks. And this, this is actually, this is going to be enough for me for now. I'm just going to take two values. So 125 is my first value. And my second value is going to be whatever this is. So I'm going to place my thingy here. I'm going to, I'm going to place my thingy here. Actually, no, maybe I'm going to place it right here. And babui. And, and babui. Okay, it didn't actually work as I planned. I was hoping they would explode at the same time. I should really sh should have used uh, redstone. Uh, so I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna redo this again. I'm gonna sh just explode it again with the redstone this time. So they actually explode at the same time. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do this time. I'm gonna place the two blocks like this and I'm gonna place the loop between them just so they explode at the same time. And I'm going to activate them and run away, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. And here we go, two 
dynamite explosions. So let's count how many blocks I get this time. 273 so my second value is 273 and that's made in blue boxes you can see it's kind of getting darker but that should be enough for me so let's go into our gdc and figure this out so i'm going to show you how to do this now we have two values and these values are for one i had two 125 blocks and for two i had 273 now I may have made a mistake somewhere, but it's not important right now. It's important just to see how I'm going to do this. And also, obviously, at zero, we have zero, right? Because when there's no dynamite, no blocks are destroyed. So uh, there's some sort of linear progression here. Um, I, I can't really solve this in my head, so I don't really know what it is. But let's find out if IGDC can, can help you. I'm going to also open the key press history uh, window. And so this is what we do first and foremost what you have to do is you have to enter these values into uh, a table but not into this table so not into this table but in a completely different table it's actually a list table which is accessed by pressing second stat second stat and uh, you can see there's another list right here it's called l1 l2 or 3 and so what we'll do is um, we're going to edit it so press stat so one more time so pre just press stat no second stat and click on edit and as you can see I had some vi values already I'm just gonna erase them because I don't really need them anymore and by to erase them actually to erase the whole column what you do is you you clear this you clear L1 by pressing this and it will clear the entire row so sometimes you have to clear this you just uh, uh, go into go on top here and then clear it uh, so L1 is our X axis and L2 is our Y axis and what we enter here is 0, 0 for first value. So this is 0, this is 0. For second value, this is 1 dynamite. This is X, 1 dynamite. Second, uh, second value is 125. So for 1 dynamite, I lost 125 blocks. And second is 2 dynamites, 273 blocks. And so that's really all you need to do. If you want to see this, if you actually want to plot this, you can, but you just pressing graph won't really do anything. And also I have to change my uh, window value to, I'm going to change my Y value to, let's just say maybe like a thousand, no, like 500. I think 500 is better. Just so you can see it a little bit better. Now, if I graph it, you won't really see much here because there's no graph yet and there's no points. You can, however, show points. And to show points, you need to go into second Y. So that's your stat plot. And then you'll have these columns here. And what you do is you click on the first one and then you type or you just press enter on. So you turn this on and this will give you your little points right here. So these are the points that we're looking at. This is actually for scatter plots. And this is how you do scatter plots later on as well when we do scatter plots. So anyway, so we have our points and let's try to figure out what this function actually is. Now for linear graphs, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, for quadratic, it's a little bit more challenging because for linear, all you need to do is you go into stat right here again. So you press stat again. So this is basically the main button you want. But this time you go into write calc. So you go this calc and click on the number four, linear, linear regression AX plus D. So click on this. Now it's going to give you this window. It's going to ask you, okay, what is your X list? And it's already entered as L1, so we're gonna keep it as L1. Y list is L2. These ones you don't really need, and you just, all you do now is press calculate. And it, it does the magic, and it gives you, okay, Y equals AX plus B. A is 136.5, B is minus 3.83. So we know that our B's, our Y intercept is actually zero, so maybe that's not exactly right. Uh, but that's okay for the for our purposes it should be okay but basically this is what we're looking for a our a if you remember is our slope this is our rate of change so what this tells us is that for every block of dynamite I lose approximately 136 blocks of uh, sand or other stuff now obviously this is not exactly correct because I know for the first one I was 125 but um, what this tells us is that this is our rate of change. Our rate of change, our rate is 136 blocks per dynamite. And the reason why it's actually not accurate and the reason why we have B is because I don't think this is actually a linear function. This is most likely a quadratic or possibly even exponential function. And we'll actually figure this out later when we do exponentials and quadratics. But for now, this is good enough. So we'll just write our answer. 
So I'm going to go back here and write my answer uh, in green and it's going to be 136 uh, blocks per TNTs and that's my answer. This, this is my answer that I found with, with my UDC. Not exactly accurate but pretty accurate so that means that for three blocks I will most likely you lose so for three blocks of TNT, I will probably lose something like 408 uh, blocks of sand. And we can obviously check this. We can uh, explore three blocks of TNT and see how it works and if it's actually 408. Uh, chances are it won't be. And mostly because, uh, for one, I actually, when I was placing my TNTs, I placed them uh, with a little space in between them because that's where I placed my lever. Uh, so that could have created a little bit of discrepancy. And also, um, I was using sand, but there was also um, there was also rock underneath it, so that could have changed my my actual value. But um, just for, to solve this problem, just to use the GDC to solve this problem, this is good enough. Anyway, so that's how you find rates, and what this is what rates are all about, and this is how you use Minecraft to find rates. Thank you for watching, and good luck. Bye bye.